with this. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Monday, June the 12th meeting of the Traffic and Parking Commission. If you are not a decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Um, first of all, before we get started into the business, uh, since Metro Police is here and staff of Public Works are here, I just want to take a moment to thank them for all their hard work over the last several weeks. Nashville's had an extraordinary, exciting time. It's been a great time to be a Nashvillian, CMA, the Predators. I know a form, one of our former commissioners, Brenda, is here, Sanderson, who has businesses downtown. And uh, it's just been great, and I've been downtown, I think many of us have, and uh, we appreciate. I think you told me, officer, that you had some officers last week work 100 hours. During the week. During the week, so. And regular work was over. Yeah, so we appreciate that, because it's what made uh, Nashville great, and we were in the limelight, so I think uh, it's just good to acknowledge that and all that's good in our city. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask for approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, yes. I have a, a question. I have a question yes, on the agenda. Um, I would like for us to have under old business, number two, uh, the Carruthers Avenue parking. Yes, ma'am. Since we deferred it from May 8th, we've deferred that many times. So I would like going forward for us to have a record on the dates that things have been deferred so we know uh, when something comes up multiple times or has multiple deferrals that all of those dates of deferral are reflected. Okay, if we could, Chip, just try to work on that as, as staff. And we need to make a revision to the agenda on O Business 1. That was approved by the commission in December, so therefore we can remove that item from okay. the agenda. Okay. All right, so we need to remove item one under old business from the agenda. Um, Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, revised agenda. Okay, we have a first. Um, can I make a motion to remove item C from the consent agenda? Oh. All right, Is, we have a first. Is there a second? And let me amend that uh, motion to approve. Wait, so wait, wait just a second. Okay. We have a first and a second on removing item C from the agenda. Okay. Is there a vote? Just from the consent, it's a consent agenda. Yeah. Okay. Second. Right. I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, Ms. Babra, would you like to make your motion now, please? Yes, uh, to approve the agenda as, as revised. Okay. We have a first. Is there a second? We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The agenda has been approved. Okay. Chip, do we have a copy of the minutes of May 8th? Yes, we do. I'll circulate them. Okay. Um, all right. Before we do that, uh, while we're waiting for that, let's move to uh, we have the consent agenda, and there's been an item removed. Uh, would like to make a motion to move for approval of the consent agenda as it's been modified. Do you, do you want to list them out? Yes, sure. I'll do that. Thank you for your reminder. Uh, the consent agenda 0617, resolution 0617, authorize item A, authorize an all-way stop 
at S South 7th Street and Glenview Avenue, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Council Member Withers, you're here. Uh, authorized new traffic signal, Harding Road at Humber Drive. Change the yield control to stop control on Rural Avenue at Burgess Avenue. Remove a valet stand at 1517 Church Street in front of the tribe. Item F, remove valet stand at 1112 Woodland Street. Item G, modify parking conditions on West End Avenue, the south side, between Ackland Avenue to 33rd Avenue from no parking, 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. to no parking any time, requested by Council Member Allen. Item H, install stop, stop sign on Ottenville Road at Moss Road, Council Member Bircher. Are you here? Okay. Uh, item I, proposal 2017M016AB001, a request for the abandonment of alley number 1200 from 45th Avenue North to alley number 1218 between Alabama Avenue and Charlotte Avenue, utilities and an easements to be retained, Dean Design Group and Metro Public Works. Proposal 2017M017AB001, a request for the abandonment of a portion of McGavick Pike from the relocated McGavick Pike eastwardly to its terminus between map 073 parcel 012 and map 073 parcel 044 and from map 073 parcel 012 northwesterly along the southwest property line of map 073 parcel 144 approximately 197 feet to the northwest portion of map 073 parcel 044 council member syracuse and metro public works that is the revised consent agenda make we have a motion to approve the consent agenda so moved. we have a first is there a second second we have a first and a second all in favor aye, aye. consent agenda is approved okay council member withers is there an item under new business that you were interested in Okay, all right, thank you. Just want to make sure. All right. All right, under new business, let's do, did we get, everybody get a copy of the minutes? I think these are April. Yeah. There should be April and May in there. Okay. They're probably just making their way around. Uh, so we only had May, so there's only one copy of each. Correct. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. All right. We're going to wait to approve the minutes of the meeting till the end of the meeting. Okay. All right. Under new business, we're going to item number one is appeal to denial of a truck prohibition over eight tons on 51st Avenue from Delaware Avenue to Centennial Boulevard. Council Member Roberts, are you here, Miss Roberts? Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. To the north. Would you like to speak about this item first, please, ma'am? Okay, all right, we will defer this item. I'm yes, we would like to speak now. Okay, you'd like to speak now because I was going to do it. Yeah, just go ahead. Let's. Would it be okay if I had my neighbors? Yes. So who's here to speak on this item for or against? Okay, is there anyone here to speak against it? Okay, all right. Well, let's. Uh, I request that we move to public hearing. We're going to limit comments to three minutes. And for those who would like to speak, please, let's start with those who are for. Just come forward. Please state your name and where you live. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Tim Brown. I live on Kentucky Avenue, about a block and a half off 51st in the Nations. Um, I'm a member of the Nations Neighborhood Association. 
and on their planning and zoning committee. So we as a committee had met and discussed this uh, particular uh, issue and have been concerned about it as a neighborhood association for quite some time, uh, mostly because of the, the issues revolving of trucks moving down a, a rapidly changing road, uh, 51st Street has under, just in the last two weeks, undergone a, a road diet and has gone from four lanes to two lanes with a center turn lane, biking lanes, parking. And that's in anticipation of future uh, growth of commercial uh, and, uh, not commercial, excuse me, um, uh, things like bars, restaurants, boutiques that are rapidly moving to uh, 51st Street in the nations. And uh, the gas trucks that are moving up and down the, that portion of the road at very high speed, uh, we feel is a safety issue, especially with the crosswalks going in. Uh, finally, we'll have ways to get across the street in your schools. Uh, also, the way the trucks now sometimes leave the neighborhood, they don't always go down 51st. They will sometimes cut up side roads to get onto the interstate at 47th and Delaware. Uh, and so it, it was basically uh, uh, an interest of the neighborhood association to uh, have this reviewed from a, a safety standpoint and from the uh, working with the trucking companies to have them instruct their drivers to use the existing Centennial Boulevard to Briley Parkway access rather than through the middle of the nations. I would refer the committee back to the events of August 14th, 2014, when a tanker truck in the nations tipped over, exploded, and sent fuel down through the stormwater. And that was actually a big news item back then. Uh, next. Sure. Matt Siegel, 4606 Illinois Avenue. Um, I'm the chair of the Planning and Zoning Committee for the Nations Neighborhood Association. Um, I passed out a letter of support uh, for this truck prohibition for trucks over eight tons. Um, primarily, we have a few concerns with the study. Uh, it did not examine outbound traffic. It only examined trucks coming into Marathon in particular. Um, trucks are full of fuel when they leave, not when they go in. So that's worth noting. Uh, not to mention that kind of the allure of the cut through is much stronger on the way out. Uh, you can see they have to make three left turns otherwise to get onto the interstate and they frequently do not. Uh, another kind of issue that we had with it is that I think a lot of the area uh, north of Centennial was labeled as industrial. Uh, 51 of those acres have changed hands are no longer industrial, not zoned industrial in most cases. Uh, approved site plans uh, for Silo Bend, which is Southeast Venture, has a 37 acre development there. Um, you know, if you look at the, some of the figures in the study, they, they don't reflect any of that. Um, so in addition to the transition that Tim mentioned and just kind of how our neighborhood has changed, of course, 51st, as Tim mentioned, is changing. Um, there's also a phase two coming, but primarily what we're seeing is 51st no longer being kind of industrial commercial corridor that it was, well, still commercial, I should say, industrial or warehouse type corridor that it was, but rather retail, recreational, um, more bike lanes coming, pedestrians. We're encouraging traffic on that road, pedestrian traffic, school traffic. Uh, it's in a school zone, a portion of it from India, uh, Central Rand, Indiana Avenue already. You know, this decision today, really looking three, four, five, 10, 12, 20 years down the road, it, it just seems hard, hard to, it seem, doesn't seem tenable to me to continue to have fuel tankers running down this road. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jilla Khalil. I live at 49th in Kentucky on the east side of 51st and uh, happen to be on this committee, but also happen to be a new community member and find it um, very difficult to get in and out of the roads at all times of the day. I work from home but head out and fuel trucks are heading in and out uh, at a very rapid pace and even with the turn lane that's just happened, it is almost impossible to make it into the turn lane to wait for the trucks to go by. Um, as well, I'm finding that trucks are using side streets to avoid 51st during this construction phase. I did not take a picture, but on either Illinois or Indiana as I was heading out, they were driving through. Um, 
I don't know if any of you have driven through some of these side streets. We're allowed parking on both sides of the street. <laughs> Construction is going on. Trucks coming down, people walking, families, dogs. It's impossible. And it is a community now. Okay. Thank you. Um, if I could add one thing. Did, um, okay. did the committee receive the letter from the NNA? Yes. Okay, because there were a number of pictures in there that showed the trucks on the side streets that we wanted did you, to point out. Did you wish to speak, ma'am? Can I just take one quick moment? Yes. I know you're taking care of a baby, oh, so. <laughs> you can have my seat. He's got Daniel Tiger. Yeah. Uh, my name is Kelly Babcock. I live at 4608 Indiana Avenue across the street from Cockrell Elementary School. Um, as you can see, I have a small child, so I'm actually loading and unloading my small child and future small child on the street where these trucks are flying by, disregarding the speed limit all the time and honestly disregarding the stop sign that Mary Carolyn worked so hard to get in at 46 in Indiana. They go through that stop sign without stopping frequently. Um, I also tried the West Park Community Center reopened last year with lots of activities for kids um, across 51st from where we live. Uh, they have a tot time and so I thought it's a mile away, I can walk over there. I attempted to cross 51st multiple times, pregnant, pushing a baby in a stroller. The tankers won't stop for me, they completely disregard me. My neighbors will yield to me, but the tankers don't. Um, and so it's like playing Frogger. And so I've stopped. I've decided to now drive a mile to the community center so that I can participate because I didn't feel that it was safe for me to cross over 51st um, in the very well-marked crosswalk um, with signs uh, with a baby stroller. Um, I just like to say if they don't regard a pregnant woman with a stroller, they're probably not regarding children or the elderly or handicapped individuals who are also trying to cross that street. Um, and just to speak on behalf of the children of Cockrell Elementary School who do play in the yard of the elementary school where those tankers go by. When that tanker exploded on Centennial, all I could imagine was what if that was that tanker that we know drives down Indiana and it had exploded right there in front of the elementary school with children in the yard. It would have been horrific. So I just want to speak on behalf of the community and families in the community. Right. Thank you for your comments. Is there one more person to speak? Yes, ma'am. I just want to add a quick Please. comment. State your name and where you live. My name is Lenore Rosenblatt. I'm at 4608 Illinois Avenue. Just a quick comment. I have many, many times observed trucks not only going down Illinois Avenue, but at very high speeds, also up 51st. And, and this is a, a daily occurrence. And that's adding to what everybody else has said. All right. Thank you. Ms. Roberts, would you like to? I would like to speak, please. Yes, please. So, first of all, I want to thank you, all of you for what you do. I don't think I could ever hear frequently enough to say thank you, but I, I really appreciate it. In a neighborhood like ours that we've had to literally change the landscape and, and get as many zoning change, I mean, uh, stop signs and, and traffic calming, I, I just really appreciate what you all do. You know, this really isn't about uh, banning the 18 wheelers. This is about safety. And at the end of the day, when these trucks are going through two school zones and four crosswalks that are, are now about to be put in, uh, now that 51st is a complete street, this is, this is a huge safety issue. And so I felt that it was my responsibility to talk to the businesses and to, from day one, I've said that I saw this as being the ultimate thing that we probably needed to do, but it didn't seem fair to come in day one and say this is they've been there as long as we have so one by one I've talked to the businesses and they are all in agreement that this is a different this is a different place than it was 10 years ago it's a different place five, than five years ago. So I felt like the biggest player in this was Marathon Oil because they are the ones at the very end of Centennial with the tanks. So I had a meeting with them last Wednesday at 9 a.m. and I said that this is our plan and this is what a complete street is and this is what this is gonna look like and, and they agreed. You know, I don't know how much, I speak truck now so I can kind of speak this, but I didn't know that they don't like to take left turns. 18 wheelers don't like, like to take a left. So by using the fly 
fly over, the, the, what I, and I think Briley was intended for, to go over Briley, which I, I, I would love if, if that was, if we were able to pull that up. So when they're coming down I-40, they're getting off 46th Avenue because it's a habit. They've been doing it for the last 100 years. They could easily get on the, the next exit, get off of Briley Parkway, and get off of Centennial. All they want to do is fuel up at the end of Centennial and 51st Avenue anyway. That flyover is perfect. And when I talk to them about the cross, the, the crosswalks, apparently um, downshifting is a big thing with 18-wheelers. They're now um, saying, oh yeah, that'll, that'll wear out their clutches. And this is not, it, it, I think they agree it's a safety thing, but they also agree now it's a, it's a monetary thing. So yes, it's a little further to go on the flyover, but when you consider going through four crosswalks and they're gonna have to come to a complete stop, it's actually more time, more efficient for them to do that. So even though they have to take a left turn, I asked Big Oil Marathon if they would help us, and they said absolutely. They are completely in support, and they even want to do a conjunction, a, a thing with us. We can do a safety day with the fire, the police, uh, the residents, where we can kind of all be on the same team. We're not trying to polarize with the, with the businesses, and there's no business out there that doesn't agree that this is probably a matter of time before they will probably sell because the land beneath them is more expensive than their actual business. However, Marathon Oil is that exception. They're probably not going anywhere anytime soon, so we need to learn to play with them. And, and, and if they're okay with getting off of the next exit, and it makes an in, just an amazing difference in our neighborhood, this seems like something that should be something we should all do. It really is the right thing to do. We're in a situation where with children, you know, I got a whole bunch of millennials when I got this job, and they're coming in droves, and they usually are sing, uh, dual income, no kids. Well, here we go. They're, start, they're starting to have children. They're getting pregnant. They're getting, and when this happens, this is the natural evolution of things, that we become a pedestrian-friendly neighborhood. And thanks to Nora and her group, which I really was not the first one to, to believe that we needed to go in that direction. I, I'm all about, I thought it was, you know, let's get parking. But she was right. And we, need to, we needed to have pedestrian-friendly neighborhood. And we needed one that it's, it's not the only mode of transportation as a vehicle. And so by doing that and creating this 51st Avenue, Complete Street, which I, I don't know if you all have been out there lately, but it's just, it's magical what's happening in this neighborhood. And uh, this 18-wheelers just don't fit in with us anymore. This is not something that, it's just, times are changing. We can't have that and be, be in a neighborhood where pedestrians feel safe. So I'm asking you, I'm imploring you to please please just reroute them. There's no one standing in the way. Even, even the businesses are behind us. So if there's anything that I can do or answer or plead, I, I, would, I would ask that you would pass that today, that we okay. get the 18-wheelers off 51st. Right. Thank you very much, Council Member. Uh, I don't think there's anyone else here to speak for. We have a person who would like to speak against. So we'll let that gentleman come forward. Please be sure to state your name and address for the record, please. I'm uh, Brian Petty. I'm the managing member. New to this. Sorry. Uh, thank you. I'm Brian Petty. I'm the managing member of Tennessee Contractors Equipment. It's located at 651st Avenue in Delaware. And uh, not to, uh, I certainly want to respect my neighbors. I, I agree with the neighborhoods changing, uh, but. I do have to kind of take exception to what Ms. Roberts said. Nobody has uh, approached me at all about, and we have uh, 18 wheelers, and unfortunately, we're right at 51st Avenue, and to shut that down would be very, very difficult for a small business. Uh, you know, uh, I'd certainly be willing to work with my neighbors and see if we can do anything to kind of hedge the risk, but we're not talking just tanker trucks here, we're talking uh, several small businesses in that area, and I'm not sure that they all are aware, I wasn't until a little while ago that this is even on the table. So if we could you know, postpone it or at least have some kind of talk with our neighbors to see what we could do without, because the financial impact to my business would be very, very difficult. I can't understate that. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I totally sympathize with the mother, especially. I have young kids, and I, and I agree that the neighborhood's changing, but I think not everybody has been considered here. Um, 
and in particular us. Nobody has talked to us about this issue, and I would like that chance before we moved any kind of decision about you know blocking out. We, we uh, to clarify, we rent construction equipment, which requires heavy vehicles to haul it, and uh, I don't think we're danger or, or pose a risk. Certainly, if I did, I would I wouldn't feel the way I do about this particular topic. Can you tell us where your business is? Sure, it's at 600 51st Avenue, which is right on the corner. Unfortunately, it, we're right next to the interstate. That's it right there. Uh, and it, you know, even if we could just back this up a block or, or so to allow us to, to enter our business, we, we did go through, uh, hired a lawyer and at, at great expense to a small company, uh, a proper zoning criteria for, for what we do. We had specialists come in and we paid and, uh, you know, we pay our taxes, we're good citizens, we're good neighbors. You know, we want to contribute to this neighborhood. We don't want to be a thorn in its side. We want to work alongside it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so uh, I, I love my neighbors. I don't wish to move my business. I disagree about the, the whole idea that we're gonna sell the business anytime soon. We have no intention until you guys run us out on a rail <laughs> of, uh, I mean, we like who we are, we like where we are. We've been there for 12 years plus. And, you know, to just come in and kind of pull this out without even talking to us is, is a little rough to take, quite honestly. Uh, so if we could at least have that conversation with our neighbors, again, I totally get and understand what, what's going on here. Uh, I'd just like the chance to state my case. So thank you for letting me do that today. Certainly. Thank you very much. Okay. It, I think people have spoken for and against. Um, so what I'd like to do is to clear the public hearing close and then we can get staff report and conversation among members. Uh, let us uh, do our next step, please, ma'am. So, um, like Council Member Roberts said, there. This roadway has gone through a transformation from a four-lane road to a three-lane road. You might have heard it called a road diet, but um, with protected bike lanes and some various decorative crosswalks planned, and it really ha it is going through a change. Um, the reason staff recommended denial is because the classification of the road is classified through the Planning Commission as an arterial, and our hands are somewhat tied when you start implementing restrictions on the roads you want the vehicles to be on. So an arterial is built on paper for trucks. Um, that is not saying that it hasn't gone through a transformation and that classification may change eventually, but right now it's stamped as an arterial roadway. Um, Brandon, did you bring your presentation? Are you prepared? Brandon did a report and I did email that out and if you've had a chance to read it, that helps. If not, Brandon can summarize it in a couple minutes or two. This is the technical reason we did not just flat out approve this truck restriction. In Council Lady Roberts' defense, it is, it is a new evolving area um, where trucks may or may not be desirable. But I, I want to address that a truck prohibition does not restrict a business from doing business. And we've all been here on these cases where you can't keep a business from accessing their own land through anything that this body enacts. So Metro Legal, I don't know if you can explain it any better than that, but a truck prohibition only prevents cut through, quote unquote, trucks from getting there. Delivery trucks and your business trucks still can access that without legality. It's still up to enforcement and interpretation of the law, but that's the gist of it. Have you got anything to add to that, Terry? I, I can just uh, refer to the relevant code section, um, 1236.110A um, says in pertinent part, um, such vehicles may be operated thereon for the purpose of delivering or picking up materials or merchandise and then only by entering such street at the intersection nearest the destination of the vehicle and proceeding thereon no farther than the nearest inter intersection thereafter. So basically there's an exception to the prohibition for pickups and deliveries at that location. Um, we've had some discussion in the past as to kind of the legislative intent behind that, that um, description. Um, you know, as to whether it was really intended for like UPS trucks and things like that, but um, it doesn't specify that in the code. So we, you know, by default kind of have to give it a more generic, broader interpretation because 
That's what the language says. So RPM Engineering did a study about the pros and cons of this request. And like I said, Brandon can kind of give us a couple minute presentation if you got the time. Please I'm, begin. I'm Brandon Taylor, I'm with RPM Transportation Consultants and we, uh, as Chip mentioned, looked over uh, rather restricting. Could, could you make sure you speak into the microphone so everyone can hear you? Is this better? Okay. Uh, we looked into whether or not um, changing the or not the classification, but changing whether or not trucks can use 51st Avenue um, and what, what that would entail. Um, so as part of the study, like I said, we determined the feasibility of the truck restriction. We investigated alternative routes for trucks if they were no longer able to use 51st Avenue. Um, took into account the existing and future layout of 51st Avenue, and then compared the existing truck route to the new truck route. So this is a um, current slideshow of the nation's area. And as you can see, um, the red are truck restricted in both directions. I guess it's kind of hard to see there. The second line is green and that is Indiana and that is westbound only. And then there's another, another section of Georgia Avenue between 46th and 44th that is eastbound only. Um, and so currently the only north-south truck route is on 51st, which has direct connection to I-40. Um, as Chip mentioned, 51st Avenue is the only uh, arterial in the area. Their uh, Morrow Road is considered a collector, as well as I think 40, 42nd, um, but 51st is the only arterial. It also connects to Centennial and to I-40. Uh, when I said so as we mentioned before, the cross section is changing. So this was current as of two weeks ago. Uh, actually, this is before the changes where it was a four lane section, um, two lanes in each direction, 11 and a half foot lanes. And currently it's under construction to this new layout where we have one lane each direction, a two way left turn lane um, with on street parking and what we call a cycle track on one side of the road that will have a, a three foot buffer. So that's kind of a comparison of, of what was out there before and what the roadway is becoming. So we looked at two options. First one being truck route remains on 51st Avenue. Um, and so when you, could, when you have the truck route on 51st Avenue with the new um, roadway layout, um, you will now have more buffer between trucks and bikers because as you saw previously, cycle track will have a buffer zone between the, the cycles and the roadways. There will also be a parking lane on one side, which will add another buffer to the other side, as well as a, a new center turn lane that um, either vehicles or trucks can use. And that will also provide a buffer between um, directional traffic on 51st. Um, we- I have a question. Yep. Can you define uh, what a buffer is? I mean, what would you consider a buffer? On so 51st. That is just a, uh, there is a painted buffer, which you can see up here, that is between the cycle track and the travel lane. So it's roughly, I think it's two feet in some areas, three feet in some spaces, a portion of asphalt that neither cars nor um, bikes would use. It's, it's just an open area between cars and bikes. If you wanna go ahead. Um, uh, we also, or, I'm sorry, go back, yep. We also looked at um, businesses on 51st Avenue. Um, from our observations, there, there are, um, I, f I, I don't know off the top of my head how many, but there are a few businesses that do have um, heavy trucks that um, park in their lot or use their lot. Um, and so we, we looked at how that would affect if, if 51st was cut off. Um, Using 51st would also minimize any or trucks potentially using other neighborhood roads. If, if the other neighborhood roads are restricted and 51st remains open, it's more likely that trucks would use 51st instead of um, navigating outside of 51st. Um, and I guess one of the, the main things is travel from I-40 to the Centennial um, area is shorter on 51st as compared to Briley Parkway, and I'll talk about that in the next option. And 
the new pavement that was just put down, like I said, the, the road was resurfaced. The new pavement is designed for arterial standards, which will allow heavy trucks to use it. If you want to go to the next one. This is uh, option two. This is the truck, the alternative truck route if 51st was closed. Um, so as you can see, trucks, if they no longer reduce 51st, the, the, um, the next best option is to use Briley Parkway to Centennial. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, we compared the, the travel times for both. And if you're coming from westbound on I-40, um, it would take you approximately um, 1.2 miles or three minutes to get to Centennial with Briley Parkway to Centennial Detour. You're looking at approximately four miles each direction or a change of uh, six minutes each direction. If you're coming from eastbound, it's um, very close to the same, 1.5 miles and three minutes on 51st and approximately 3.4 miles and, and five minutes each direction on Briley Parkway. Can I ask a quick question about that? Mm -hmm. Are those actual travel times, um, as in a car going at, or, or a truck going out at rush hour and stopping for at the crosswalks, or is that just based on the distance and the speed limit? It's based on the distance and speed limit. Okay. Um, so with option two, uh, with 51st Avenue restricted, um, it's foreseeable that trucks would, um, who are who would usually use 51st Avenue, would um, come to this intersection. Um, see that it's, still, it's truck restricted and have to turn around and possibly on some neighborhood streets. It's also foreseeable that trucks would continue to use it um, if they don't see the sign or if, if they um, use that before. Uh, like I said, travel times to the industrial area would uh, double. Um, and then w one other item is this would be the only, or if 51st was cut off, Centennial would be the only truck route in and out of the area. Um, like we, we said before, uh, we felt having two truck routes in and out of the area was a, a safer condition for the industrial area. And if the option two, if, it, if 51st is closed, outreach to the industrial areas would be needed in order to make sure everybody was on the same page. So if you wanna go to the last slide. So um, as part of our study, we, we recommended staying with option one um, since it was the shortest route to the industrial area from I-40. With the new pavement markings on 51st, there would be more of a buffer between vehicles. Um, it would act as a traffic calming uh, where there wouldn't be so, you know, there's, there's more of a buffer on each side so it would allow vehicles to slow down. And it would cut down on the possibility of trucks turning around on uh, neighborhood streets. Or questions from commissioners, please. Yeah, can I ask you if I got a room? Yeah. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. Um, what type of businesses are on 51st and what's the tonnage or maximum tonnage of those vehicles as opposed to the ones on Centennial Boulevard? The businesses? Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't have that information. <clears throat> so we don't even know. Can anybody answer that question? So gentrification has included restaurants are coming. Uh, we have the corner pub, you all have it. it's the corner pub, the tavern, Mickey's um, uh, coal fired uh, bar and grill, uh, Nation, Trophy Monkey, um, the catering company, 10 Wings, all of these are small business, not all of them are small, but these are all businesses that have opened in the last or will open in, in the next year. And you know, most of those were businesses. Um, I'm selling a huge property over there that I cannot disclose that is no longer gonna be industrial, it's gonna be actually residential. So there's very little residential zone, I mean industrial zoning left on 51st Well, that's what I'm asking though. The businesses on 51st Avenue, are these straight trucks or are these tractor trailer rigs? They, they're, they're phasing out. The, 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 Mr. Petty was right, and, and I did not speak to him, and the reason I didn't is because he's grandfathered in. The few, there are very few that are, are needing a And he's closer to Delaware, right? He is, he could get, and that, right. that's So he can come out of Delaware? Right, absolutely. Okay. And there's a lumber company that they're, they're gonna be grandfathered in too if they don't sell. It's, it's not, I'm not trying to get the 18, I'm not, this isn't a ban, this is a safety thing. 
Right, and that's why I was asking that. And where'd y'all come up with the eight ton limit? That's, that's just standard in our office. Okay. It was five for a while, and we bumped it up to eight years ago, okay. 16,000. Because I put 10 on mine, on Hadley, Yeah. if you remember that. But what we did, we apportioned part of Hadley off because that industrial company back there. So um, it disallowed them from coming way back into the village area. And that's why I wanted to know if these people had businesses back there. Um, <clears throat> I think what you're trying to address is mostly the stuff over by the river, which includes the, the gas company, Marathon. Um, Colonial. Um, and the plastic company. Those are the three that, that primarily, and they're all on the western part of Centennial. Okay. With the exclusion of Marathon, who's now in support of, of having all right. this change. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. There's several things that concern me. Number one, what the gentleman said is if we change this, trucks are going to have to turn around in a residential area. Is that what I understand? Then we've got a problem with those folks coming to us saying, hey, y'all throwed all that traffic over here on us and they're turning around. Number two, Metro has prepared this street for heavy trucks. Is that correct, yeah, Chip? In the first one, whatever this body decides to pass, we will sign it in a way to minimize your concern there. I, okay. I understand that. We would get okay. with PDOT and, and put up some signage where we could and minimize the turnarounds okay. as best as we can. Well, the issue I had years ago, this has come up before, the, the issue we've always had was without the businesses on board, we're just getting in the middle of a firestorm here. So when I talked to the council lady recently, I said, if you can talk to the businesses, the commission the commission will listen to this story a little easier because that's the battle we usually get into in this case. So if the businesses have been talked to and the road is transforming and all that, it becomes a different case than we normally hear. Um, but I understand your, your concern about the turnarounds, but we can address that yeah. in some kind of way. Well, I understand the residents' problem. I understand that. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, the gentleman said that his business had been there 12 years. Oh, no. You've been there? Oh, I was thinking it was longer, yeah. The, he absolutely, w the reason I did not speak to him, and I, I went back there and apologized that I didn't tell him, he, he is totally within his right to, to, to use these. The, the, mm -hmm. the, he's on the corner of Delaware, and when they get off the interstate on 46, they just go straight down and turn into their business. And there's, a, there's also a lumber company that's on the northeast corner of, of 51st, back three, three blocks off, and absolutely, the, it's not fair to, to penalize them. Yeah. I'm really just trying to get the gas lean away from the kids well I understand that but we run into this every week where businesses have been there for many years longer than most of us and then then all of a sudden it blossoms out to residential area then the residents want to come in right. and say hey y'all need to move and that's not fair no it's not fair to them because those folks were there when these people bought these that's houses that's right that's right so the only ones that we are really talking about is the big oil at the end okay uh, chip Thank quick you. question just clarification the my understanding the oil place is not on 51st it's over if I recall from driving over there, it's right on Centennial Boulevard. What? Marathon? Oh, Marathon. It's on Centennial. Centennial Boulevard. On the so northern end of Centennial. When you discuss about the right of businesses to use it, regardless of truck prohibition, that does not apply to Marathon because they're not on 51st. Is it, that correct? The way I understand it is even in a truck prohibited area, you're allowed to go within that area to conduct business. And so, of course, if you've got a business within that area, you have rights to access your business. Okay. Just, I'm just trying to make sure we're it's clear that this ordinance, you know, if the commission approved your request, Ms. Roberts, is that that has the effect of yes, solving the problem you're trying to solve. They don't actually have tr 18 trucks. Marathon does not own the trucks. They own the oil and people are coming there to fuel up. They said yeah. they have very, they, they, they have no ownership. They have partnerships. So I wouldn't be hindering their business because the oil is fine. Yeah. 
All right, are there any other comments from commissioners? Just to, just to clarify that, the, the exception yes. is for pickup and delivery. So if, whether they have a business on 51st or not, if someone is doing a pickup or delivery of materials or merchandise on 51st, then they are subject to the exception. Okay. It doesn't sound like it would, if we did a prohibition, it wouldn't, it that, wouldn't affect anything. That's the question that I have is if those trucks are going down the road to pick up at Marathon Oil, that's under the statute, A, meets the criteria. Well, um, the, the clarification is, um, I'm sorry, I didn't read the end of it. And then only by entering such street at the intersection nearest the destination of the vehicle and proceeding thereon no farther than the, des the nearest intersection thereafter. So the destination has to actually be within the area where the, the truck weight restriction is imposed. So in other words, on 51st. Okay, my understanding is Marathon is not on 51st. Is that correct, council member? That is correct. Okay. But the ban is only on the southern end of Centennial. Right, and the contractor business, Mr. Petty's, is on 51st. Yeah. So he, He's he would be allowed to use the street even if this prohibition is passed. Is that correct, council? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. If they are picking up or delivering materials or merchandise at your business. All right. So I think we have a clarification of the statute. Is there uh, any commissioners who want to make any kind of motion? Um, well, I'll just say I think, I, mean, yes. I think this is really a critical kind of decision for the neighborhood. And because there is an alternate route for all of the industrial areas at Centennial, um, I definitely see that you know one or two minutes of, of delay for a tanker truck seems like a, a fair trade for the safety of the community. Um, so I would motion for the approval of the um, the uh, restriction. Okay, we have a first. Is there a second? And I know the council member wants to speak. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Council member, real quick, on okay. on the business that this gentleman's here about, he's right there at Delaware and 51st, right? Correct. So if you put weight limit signs in there, you could put them just on the other side of his business. Correct. And that'd work out fine for him and the lumber yard, correct? correct. That, that's what I'd propose. I, I'm just gonna make a point of order. Mr. Petty, if that's your understanding, are you okay with this? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. We have a first and a second. Let's have a hand vote, please. Let's, um, let's clarify your motion. Yes, we have a first and a second on the motion. I need to, so, because yes. of the boundary change, we need to get pretty detailed on this. So the, the motion would be for a restriction on trucks between, on 51st, between Centennial and Delaware? Is that accurate? And if I could ask one additional point of clarification, um, it, it, this is referenced as a weight restriction. Is there a particular amount yes, it's, of weight that the restriction would? Yes, it needs to be, it needs to be um, eight tons. Over eight tons. Okay. So, Ms. Kern, if you could modify your motion, please. So, I'll, I'll make a motion to um, approve a truck prohibition over eight tons from on 51st Avenue from Delaware to Centennial. I, I'm okay with that, and that's the way we wrote it, but the way we said it was Georgia. Because that would be passed, that would be after your business. number is the between Delaware and Georgia? That's halfway up. Make sure do it in there. No, no. <laughs> I think we're just fine. I think Nora's, I, I think the, that's what Nora, Ms. Kern said is perfect. Okay, that's fine, that's the way it. Okay, we have a first. Is there a second in Ms. Kern's motion? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? No opposition, the weight limit has been approved. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Really, thank you so much. That's a deal changer for us, thanks. All right. Okay, item, next new business item is ordinance BL 2017-740, amending chapter 1252. Chip, you're gonna have to get bigger print at the next meeting. <laughs> uh, 52 of the Metro Code of Laws establishing a right for pedestrians to use certain streets. I think this was proposed by Council Member Davis. Is Council Member Davis here? Would you like to step forward and speak about your ordinance, please? And we have a 
busy agenda today, so apologize for you having to wait. No problem at all. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me here. I'll be very brief. Um, yes, this is a constituent and friend here, Carrie Rogers, uh, who works in the bike pedestrian community uh, with many others, um, Nora I know as well. Um, and what we're trying to do here is just sort of tweak the pedestrian code um, to match what we're doing for bicycles with the few feet uh, of rights given to pedestrians um, for vehicles passing. Um, we know we have a lot of streets that don't have sidewalks. Uh, obviously, we're trying to add to that every day, week, month, uh, and year here. Uh, but this is, you know, we know most people have, use common sense and move over when you see pedestrians. Um, we know the people that will probably keep doing that and the people that don't do that or, you know, this may not fix that, but uh, it's a tweak of the code and I also kind of consider this sort of an awareness campaign uh, while we're at it. So really excited about this bill um, and just ask that we can pass it and give more rights to our pedestrians on our streets. Um, and Carrie may want to make a few comments on the technicalities. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name's Kerry Rogers. I live at uh, 1310 Howard in Inglewood. Uh, this came about for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, my wife walks our dog about nine or 10 at night. Uh, she wears a reflective vest. She has a flashing leash for the dog and some people still uh, buzz them. Uh, uh, that's what we call it when you get buzzed on a bicycle. And so it, uh, I, walk, I was forced to walk the dog a few times when she was out of town. So that's when the idea came to me. And I ride a bike quite a bit, uh, as Anthony said, and of course there's a three-foot law for bicycles. So I thought, why isn't there a three-foot law for uh, pedestrians, especially on this ki type of street? And what I was thinking about is the streets that are all in uh, Anthony's district, and I'm sure everywhere around town, narrow, two-lane roads, many of which don't even have a center line and probably shouldn't, but don't have a sidewalk and don't even have a shoulder. And uh, currently, if I understand current law, uh, you don't have any right to be in the road. The current law almost uh, assumes that you'll be in the road, and then you have to give the right away to the car. So this is just a step a little bit in the other direction to say that in this particular instance, this narrow instance, that a pedestrian uh, has a right to be on that street because they have nowhere else to go. Thank you very much. I'll just add, I think we've staggered it well where, you know, it's still, if there's a sidewalk, you walk on the sidewalk. If there's a shoulder, you walk on the shoulder and so forth on down the line. So um, I think it's written well. Mr. Jameson helped us with that. And um, yeah, we hope, hope this can do some good. Also could give uh, MNPD, you know, the ability to write some tickets um, if they were seeing a lot of what do you call it, buzzing, happening, <laughs> happening. so um, just another little side factor there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, police officer, would you like to comment on this? Any? Um, the way they, they've written the three-foot law with regards to cycles and the way that they're writing this, <clears throat> the problem you have is prosecuting. Um, a good defense attorney is going to ask you for your measuring tool. What measured that three-foot? And if you can't produce it, you're just, oh my thumb. I mean, that's the problem we're going to have with enforcing anything like this. Sure. Um, but there's just no way to, to testify in a court of law and, and say 100% that yes, he, he violated that three foot. The second problem is um, it's obviously going to be a misdemeanor offense. A police officer can only issue a citation for a misdemeanor committed in their presence if they're there and they see it. Um, it's not like citizens can go down to traffic court and swear out citations on their neighbors or, or anybody else. Or uh, if they get a tag number, they, they automatically want to say, this is the vehicle. Okay, who was the driver of said vehicle? Well, I don't know. And they can't identify. So the, the prosecution aspect is going to create some issues. I, I can tell you that right now. Uh, Chip, is there any staff report or comments on this, please? No, I, I met with the council member briefly over a barbecue sandwich at Public Works Day, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and everything's good at that time. No, um, it's a good ordinance. It's a common sense ordinance in a way. Don't don't buzz your pedestrians and don't buzz your bicyclists. Enforcement is an issue with everything we pass. Now, of course, you know this is just a recommendation to council. It still has to go through the council's approval process, but. Um, I'm, I'm all for safety, even if it's kind of just words on paper, it still helps. Okay. All right, the commissioners have any other comments? Okay. Yes. I, I think when it will come into play if somebody gets hit, 
because I've represented people who got hit on bicycles and pedestrians, and like, like bicyclists, if they violate that three-foot law, it makes it easier to prosecute them civilly when they get hit. But at the same time, I understand where the officer's coming from also for enforcement. They have to be there to prosecute as a misdemeanor, but uh, I don't have a problem with it. Commissioner Woods, please. Help me a little bit. What does it mean when you buzz somebody? What's that the, was it. Did you hear that sound? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drive real close. Yeah. Drive real Brush close. them off the road, basically. So I live in neighborhoods where there are no, there's a off Woodlawn, there's no sidewalk going down to Harding, West End, whatever you want to call it. Everybody uses it, cars, bikes. Uh, pedestrians, there's no place for a pedestrian to go because there's no shoulder, just an immediate deep ditch. So uh, I'm really concerned about those kinds of roads where there's no safety for pedestrians. We don't want to encourage pedestrians to be on them if there's, there, I, are we, are cars then going to be required to stop for the pedestrians that are on places that are no sidewalks. I need some clarification. If I can get that from you all and from legal, they're going to slow down. Right now we don't have, I don't know of any, nor do, do we have any bike prohibited roadways? Well, there are limited access roads like yeah, Ellington, Parkway Ellington Parkway and stuff, Parkway. but we do not have any, we haven't passed here any prohibitions for cycling. And, and therefore, we really haven't passed anything for, you can't walk here either. So, Brandon presented at buffer zone on 51st Avenue. This is a law buffer more than a striped buffer. That's what, so until we start prohibiting cyclists and pedestrians on specific roads, they're legal to be there. It's legal for them to be there. And so, because there's the probability or possibility of them being there, we probably should have some kind of, um, law in place, ordinance in place that protects them because in some cases, Harding before we built the sidewalk, there were people walking down the side of that road and, and they were had no choice but to sometimes get almost in the road to, because of the drop-offs and stuff. And we had some fatalities out there. Would this prevent that? I don't know, but at least it's something that we can think of. When I see a cyclist now, I know there's a three-foot law and I kind of scoot over a little bit and go two and a half feet, not go three feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Four uh, would be okay. <laughs> so again, is it going to prevent people from being in the road and in a dangerous situation? No, but it does give us something as drivers to think about. Even if it just one day when I'm driving down, I see a pedestrian, I think of this ordinance, I move over. That's Quiet. every little bit helps. But at, Do, the, at, the, other, at oh. the same time, if this commission is, is focused, also supposed to focus on pedestrian safety, then we don't want to encourage people to, we don't want to set them up for failure if the roads aren't made for, and have no intention of being made for a place for people to walk, run, walk their dog, use their stroller, so. Good point, and, and that's what we're facing in the bike community as well. We do not want to encourage cycling where it could present a dangerous situation more than just prohibiting it or not putting in a, a bike lane or a buffer. If you can't do a buffer, don't do anything at all in some cases. Um, curvy country roads. So I, I understand your point. Okay. Is there any other? And that, and that would be a case by case situation. If you know of a road where it, at night you can't see somebody around this curve, maybe we do prohibit walking some, in some places, but it would be very specific case by case roadways. Okay. Commissioner Kern. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would. I mean, I think I, you know, I agree. Certainly, we don't want to encourage pedestrians, um, or we don't want to encourage dangerous behaviors. But I also think it's. Uh, I think this is a really important step. Um, similarly, with bikes, it's not perfect. The streets aren't perfect. Um, I don't think we're going to find a perfect solution. But this is kind of helping balance it out a little bit more. And I think it's also important. Um, to kind of deal with the reality of the situation that is that we have today. People are going to be walking. We're not going to have sidewalks everywhere. I think we have 19% of our streets with sidewalks. And so um, while we, while we, you know, I don't want to lose uh, a better option just because it's not perfect. So I think this is a, a good step forward. And I think the, the publicity part is huge because it's, I think it's worked very well in, in the, you know, bike community that people know that they're supposed to give three feet and it's a catchy, catchy slogan. So I think um, it would similarly have a, a positive impact on, on walking. Okay. Uh, with that said, would anyone like to make a motion? So moved. 
Ms. Faber made a motion first. Is there a second? Seconded. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Not. Please signify your support by raising your hand. All in favor? It is. All any against? None. It is passed unanimously. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Item three is complimentary parking for volunteers of the Taste of Music City for 60 spaces in the public square garage. Move for approval. We have a first. Is there a second? We have a first and a second. All in favor? Any comments, please? Okay. None. Then all in favor? Aye. Is no, any opposed? It has passed. Okay. Item four is sidewalk encroachment regulations. It's my understanding, I think there's several individuals who are interested in this item and like to speak about it. Is that correct, Chip? You want to leave, Claudia? Sorry. Sorry about the predators. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Hi. Ms. Husky, before you start, I'd I don't know if you were here when we started beginning. We commended the police department and public work for all their work the last couple of weeks. I know the mayor's office was well involved as well. So uh, this commission, as you've heard, concerned about safety and uh, having making sure the streets are safe. So please extend our uh, thanks to the mayor and the, her office for working with everybody to make the last several weeks a great time in Nashville. Absolutely, and I'd be remiss without also thanking the Office of Emergency Management and the Fire Marshal's Office and the Fire Department because everybody really pulled together, but I will say that Metro Police and Public Works went above and beyond, and it was absolutely tremendous, and I'm still, um, my heart is a little broken, but um, I, I think that every time we joked about uh, CMA Fest and, and, you know, the Stanley Cup final overlapping, it was, it was that, it was a joke, and, and I think now the world has has seen how special Nashville is and and hopefully we are example for all of the other NHL cities on how they should support their teams so thank you to everybody in this room for helping to make that happen okay. um, well commissioners we this was a, a really um, good time to, to talk about uh, sandwich boards and and our um, the items that are currently on our public right-of-ways um, we've had a discussion um, you know kind of among several departments you know, regarding uh, the Gale Studios report that I'm sure hopefully um, has been shared with all of you prior to this but um, in talking about our Broadway expansion project and you know something that Metro is going to invest millions of dollars in um, you know expanding our sidewalks um, expanding some of the bulb outs and providing some options for um, our downtown downtown merchants, you know, hopefully um, down the line we can explore some um, really cool things for 2nd Avenue as well, which I know is, is all of our intent. Um, one, of the, one of the questions came up, which was, you know, why are we going to invest, you know, all these resources in, you know, removing the bike rack, which I think everybody agrees is, is not as attractive as we'd like it to be, and, you know, expanding the sidewalks and putting in some kind of, um, you know, agreed upon partition when we have a bunch of sandwich boards you know that are privately owned on our public right-of-ways that um, are you know kind of a clutter for for the sidewalk and and you know could if removed make for increased pedestrian access and so you know in the from my conversations with the merchants and others you know it was a pretty standard practice that most folks pick them up during CMA anyway um, because they you know we have such large crowds downtown and so you know would it be um, a good idea to you know, ask them to keep them up. So when talking to Metro Legal, um, I think what we have found is that current Metro code uh, does not allow for um, sandwich board signs to be on the public right of way, but that there was a um, differentiating you know opinion I think passed in the 90s by this commission that you know did allow for some um, uh, you know advertising to be private advertising to be on that public right of way, and so I think that this is, you know, a little bit of an effort to clean up um, and not have some of those disparities between the policies. Um, and then also, you know, my commitment has been that, you know, we and I've been talking to many of the um, merchant leaders to 
kind of talk through, you know, what is a, a reasonable, you know, kind of accommodation. We've talked about um, having, um, working with the Historic Zoning Commission to put something permanent um, affixed on, on the, on, you know, the building so they can advertise daily specials and, and that kind of stuff again while we're moving um, the, the, you know, sandwich boards. And part of the challenge I think that we're also facing is, um, you know, while some keep within, I think, the current restrictions, there are many that are much larger and, and don't. And so I think in a lot of the conversations, again, that I've had, folks have said, well, we don't necessarily want to have a sandwich board, but if our neighbor has one, you know, we feel compelled to have one. And so if nobody can have one, then that's probably a little bit, um, a little bit of a, an easier thing to enforce. Thank you, Ms. Husky. I can add to that just a little bit if you want. What Ms. Husky said is basically exactly right. You know, sometimes when you look into these questions and you have uh, multiple different perspectives, you kind of realize that our Metro code has kind of evolved organically over time and that sometimes, um, sometimes even the legal department doesn't know everything that's in it. But when we really started looking into this, we found, um, I had them in front of me, one, two, Three, four, I found four different prohibitions on having signs or obstructions in the public right of way, period. And then on the other side, we have this commission sidewalk encroachment regulations that were passed in 1998 that actually do allow sandwich boards in the public right of way. And it seemed inconsistent to us. So um, among the attachments you have before you is just an attempt to kind of clean that up and, and get rid of that inconsistency. And so basically it's a red line that just takes out all the references to signs and sandwich boards in the right of way out. It takes all of that out of the um, sidewalk encroachment regulations, but leaves in all the other, you know, um, good provisions um, that that are um, within those regulations. Um, it, it's interesting because those regulations actually had a permitting scheme for these signs as written, but no one had ever pulled one of these permits, and so. You know, it's not something that people were apparently relying on um, because no one had ever actually come to the Public Works permitting office and said, hey, I want a permit for this. Um, but obviously the signs and sandwich boards are still there um, in many places. Um, so we really are just, I mean, there are, there are some areas of, um, uh, of um, governance, I guess, where this commission actually does have the ability, where your regulations actually have the force of law, but um, sidewalks um, are not one of those areas. Um, that is not listed in the charter provisions that relate to the authority of this commission. Um, so your regulations were really just something that the Metro Council delegated to you the ability to make. And so I would say that the code provisions that are inconsistent with the regulations would prevail over them in terms of enforceability regardless. So by taking these out, we're not really changing anything. We're just kind of cleaning it up and making it more consistent with what the law currently provides for anyway. Thank you. I think there's some people here who'd like to share some comments with us. If you would step forward, please. And I don't want to, yes, I don't want to deny you your full chance to speak, but the day is getting long. <laughs> Well, hello, commissioners. It's interesting to be on this side of the yes. table again. Um, I kind of like this. Um, Please state your, is, yeah, state your name. Yes, further. my name is Brenda Sanderson. Uh, I live on Church Street in downtown Nashville. Um, and I have with me Layla Bartanian. Layla Bartanian, and I'm at 30, 38 Middleton Street, right across the street from so, all of us. So Layla and I are both owner, business owners downtown and have been for a really long time, me since um, 1993 and Layla just about uh, that, that length of time as well. And uh, when we uh, first came here and started talking a little bit about whether it's sandwich boards or whatever in the public right away, 
I just wanted to clarify a few things that, uh, yes, we've been having them a long time. Maybe that was uh, legally correct or maybe it wasn't, but we still had them. And some of us have spent some significant funds. If you will see these couple of uh, pictures that I am uh, have passed around there, those were signboards that we've had artists to design over the years. Sometimes they get a little banged up and broken and we have to have them repaired, that sort of thing. But you know, in no way do I see them as clutter. That's not to say there aren't some things down there that maybe is clutter. Uh, but what do we do? Do we throw the baby out with the bathwater here? Um, I think this last weekend, and, and certainly it's been epic in downtown uh, recently, but these times are kind of few and far between. If you walk down Broadway today, it's a different street than it was 24 hours ago. So uh, granted, while we had CMA Fest or whatever, we did not need all of these things on the sidewalk. We voluntarily all pulled it. Well, I wouldn't say all, but 90% of the- The majority pulled them off. Yes, and we've done it before. We do it during CMA, we do it 4th of July, New Year's, that sort of thing. So we try to be responsible and realize that when people are on the street that we need all the space we can. In saying that, though, um, there are times when many merchants need something in front of their business. And, you know, ours is not necessarily to promote a, um, a beer price or a food price or anything like that. They're, they're an additional sign, perhaps, uh, that says what business is in in front of that sign. So perhaps we need to think of them as an additional sign. Maybe we need to look at it that. I don't want to just come here and complain about something without some alternatives that how we might deal with it all in the future. Um, you know, I, I notice people walking down the street and some of these items that are on the street, whether it's a large Elvis or, you know, it's it's um, the stage on Broadway sign that's very unique and very interesting. And all of these things are part of the atmosphere of downtown. And Broad Broadway is such a unique street that you almost can't just say what what goes along for one place will work on Broadway. It is just too unique an environment. So let's think about that as we move forward and what we need to do. Um, you know, I, I, like I say, I, I don't see it as clutter. I don't see people, a lot of people, as problems. I see that as opportunities. There, I'm so proud of the city of what happened in the last week. Uh, certainly last several weeks, but this last week was incredible. You couldn't ask for better police activity, the public works. It, last night when we walked out of that game and I saw the street, I'm thinking, they will never get this cleaned up. This morning I was back down there, well guess what it was, and, it, and it's back to business as usual. They, these guys did an incredible job. We had almost no problems that I know of of anything Yarn. significant. And, um, you know, if there's anything we can do as merchants, we want to be a part of any of these solutions. And you guys have been really great at Public Works of including us, whether it's a Broadway streetscape or, or whatever. And Claudia and the mayor's office have just been really great to work with. But. You know, I, I feel, I have a, um, my heart enjoys these things that are on the street like the sandwich boards. And I think a lot of tourists enjoy them. So let's see if we can figure out something if there's five days a year or ten years, a, a ten days a year, Fourth of July, whatever, that we need to move them. You know, that's, that's no problem. We move them. Maybe we can move them up against the walls. Maybe we can do something that we can keep them and still make sure the sidewalks are safe. We're about to undergo. We should wait for, um, not yes, to interrupt, interrupt you, but um, you know, Gail's doing a study about widening the sidewalks and putting up barriers. Let's not get too hasty right now. Maybe we should wait to see what happens at that point to see how much room we do have or where we could place the sandwich boards. Perhaps we could 
they can make a section where we could place our sandwich boards specifically while the guild is doing their their uh, project down there. So I don't, I, I don't think we should be so hasty right now and let's see what happens in the near future. Because we are very responsible yes. with removing them as we did um, this whole week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did, did you have anything to add, please, ma'am? Uh, please yeah. state your name. My name is Sharon Jacobs. I'm with Bone McAllister North. I'm here on behalf of Icon Entertainment Group and specifically Bill Miller, who's the chief executive officer. Unfortunately, he found out about this about two hours ago. And so he asked me to come and bring this letter and pass it out to you. Um, he, as I'm sure many of you know, he runs Johnny Cash Museum, Patsy Klein Museum, Nudie's Honky Tonk, Music City Threads. Dear Commission, I write this letter on my behalf as well as others who have expressed these same sentiments. Had today's agenda been clear, many more business owners would be attending the Commission's meeting today. Sandwich boards are critical for the Patsy Klein Museum and the Bongo Java Cafe located at 11, or 119 3rd Avenue South in addition to other businesses in the vicinity. We operate multiple businesses in the 3rd Avenue building. Because we have used up all our signage allotment under the restrictive historical guidelines or restrictions, the only way most customers find our business is directly from sandwich boards. We have data that shows our businesses suffer greatly, as they do every year when we are required to move the sandwich boards during the CMA Fest. To be clear, while the crowds in downtown Town Nashville increased greatly, our sales figures decrease. It has been our experience that the decrease in business during CMA Fest is directly related to the absence of the non-intrusive sandwich boards at 119 3rd Avenue South. The sandwich boards have never been an impediment to any right of way on 3rd Avenue. Furthermore, sandwich boards have become more and more important for merchants downtown due to the numerous street closures, blockages, etc., which make it more difficult for tourists to navigate the maze they often encounter when they visit downtown Nashville. We believe a prohibition is a major mistake. It will directly harm local business and is counterproductive. Without the boards, tourists will become more frustrated with our downtown experience. I respectfully request that the ban on these boards be deferred until all merchants have had a chance to provide meaningful input, meaningful input to this commission on the matter. We believe turning it over to historical commission is certainly not the solution as it will fall outside of their jurisdiction. It's important to take note that Broadway and the area immediately surrounding it comprises one of the most lucrative and important revenue sources as well as the most popular tourist destination for our city. If you allow downtown to become homogenized like any other downtown in any other city, you'll soon see an exodus and decrease in the numbers of those tourists who come here for our music city experience. Rather than focusing on sandwich boards, which help tourists and businesses, may I respectfully suggest that Metro instead focus on infrastructure, sidewalks, clogged gutters, and the odor emanating from the sewers and storm water drains. I can assure you that our customers believe these issues are far more, far more offensive than a sandwich board. It appears that what Metro is doing with the participation of outside consultants is to alter the aesthetic of what makes downtown Nashville unique. Please do not consider closing all or part of Broadway as a solution. Circulation is already horrendous and closing yet another street or portion of a street would be a huge mistake. If you're looking for a poster child for reason to not close a portion or portions of Broadway and the surrounding area, look no further than Beale Street in Memphis as a reason to not proceed with any such plans. All business owners I speak with cite Beale Street as an example of what our downtown should never become. I've been there and I agree. As a business owner, I'm downtown nearly every day. Since I operate businesses in several locations, I walk Broadway several times a day on a typical day. Let's encourage mer merchants to spruce up and maintain their storefronts and continue to deliver the unique Music City experience to those who come here to see it and enjoy it. Respectfully, Bill Miller, Chief Executive Off Officer of Icon Entertainment Group. Okay. And I'm happy to pass. Yes, please make sure you do that. I'm All sorry, right. I did not make enough copies. Okay. <laughs> make, uh, give it to staff, and the staff will make sure that all commissioners get it. Okay. Chip, is there anyone else in the audience who want to speak about this matter? Chip, what is kind of the... Terry, can, can you summarize 
I, I don't want to butcher this, but I, what I believe is there are codes in place that, for lack of better words, oh, trump any regulations this body puts in place. So just because we have some regulations involving signs, Metro Code supersedes it. So what we're trying to do today is fix the regulations that we have in place so we're not in violation of a code or contradicting a code. That, that's, sort of. exa that, that's exactly correct, um, Chip. Um, so, so basically, um, like I said, there, there are, the charter does give this commission um, some areas of jurisdiction where your regulations have the force of law, like an ordinance, like a code provision and are enforced by MNPD accordingly. But, but this issue, the sidewalk encroachment regulations, were previously determined by my office not to be one of those areas. So council, in, a, in part of the code, a section of the code, did give you some rulemaking authority as to sidewalk um, encroachment provisions, but that rulemaking would not um, prevail over contradictory metro code provisions that were enforced by ordinance. So basically, in order for the signs and sandwich boards that everyone agrees are, are out there currently, um, uh, that, that they are in fact currently in violation of several other metro code position, pre, um, provisions that were adopted by council by ordinance that basically say you cannot have signs or obstructions in the public right of way, period. <coughs> Um, and so I think council would have to take action by ordinance to change those other code provisions in order to um, allow these um, types of things to be permitted in the right of way. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I speak briefly yes. again? Yes, Ms. Husky. Um, sorry, Thank Claudia you. Husky again at the mayor's office. And I have communicated with leadership from the district that we do want to meet with the merchants and have a separate meeting about this issue in particular. And I've talked to Councilman O'Connell, and he is in full agreement that we do need to have discussions on if there is a time of year that these would be more helpful to have out than less. If there are, you know, as Ms. Sanders and spoke, and I worship these two ladies, just make have that on the record. Um, but basically, if there is, you know, are certain days that there should be restrictions, or again, you know, certain signs, certain sizes that, you know, could be, um, could be, you know, maintained. But uh, the challenge that we have right now is that there is no uniformity. There's no uniformity for placement. There's no uniformity for size. There is no uniformity for uh, numbers allowed per business. Um, um, and so, you know, right now we just, I think, need to kind of start with a blank slate and have a conversation with the business owners as well as, you know, um, like Layla was saying, you know, with the Gill Studio plans and look at what is the best um, vision for Broadway, you know, with all the stakeholders involved that does not have, um, that does not have, you know, the, the kind of conflicting law that, um, that currently exists. Thank so that you. is our intent. Thank you very much. It, it appears that we've kind of started a discussion, and it appears that we have numerous stakeholders involved where we need additional conversations and discussions to Correct. And try to draft. Correct. First of many. In fact, you've probably done many already that before. But, but if, if we were to recommend approval of this today, this body, you are not saying you can't have a sandwich board. That's... We're not the ones knocking those sandwich boards off the silo. The code is already in place that regulates that. What we're trying to do today is adjust the regulations that, was, that were passed in 98 that really do fall under the jurisdiction of this body and let the code take care of the code part. So right now we've got a regulation that contradicts code and we don't want that. That's what it is. Are there any comments, questions from commissioners, please? I, I do have a question. Um, is there a differentiation between sandwich board and boot or whiskey barrel or, you know, I mean, are those all being lumped into one thing or? I mean, some of the um, code provisions that I'm referencing, I, I can just go over those real quickly if, if that's useful to anyone. Um, uh, let me see, I have 604020A, 1312190A3, 1308040B1, and 1732050F. 
And several of them refer to signs or advertising in the public right-of-way, but a couple of the others just refer to obstructions in the public right-of-way. Um, I mean, with permanent obstructions in the public right-of-way, there are already abilities to go to council and get encroachment permits. Um, uh, but, you know, that usually wouldn't be the case with a little sandwich board that you can just pick up and carry inside. Um, so there's n not really anything in the code itself that allows those currently. Um, and so it, I think this, the solution would have to be legislative. It would have to be the Metro Council enacting new code provisions to allow this. Any comments from Commissioner? Yes, Ms. Kerr. Well, um, I, I just, I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, if we can help the process and help stream on the conversation by just making sure everything matches and then encourage everyone to sit down and kind of come up with a comprehensive solution, that seems like a, a, good, a good way forward. So I would support going ahead and approving these changes and then um, hopefully when, when everything streamlines, sitting back down later once the code's sorted out. <laughs> One, one last comment on that, uh, along with things like sandwich boards or whatever, we, we don't want to do anything to not be able to have public art and that sort of thing. So there's, there's a lot of things here involved. It, it's not just a signboard. Uh, you know, I would love to see the Ryman just did a couple of wonderful new bronze statues. Would, wouldn't those be awesome on the street somewhere too? So uh, again, when you do one thing, you have to think about all the other ramifications of what you might be restricting. So public art is important. Uh, some of these, obviously, these signboards are not necessarily public art, but they are unique. <laughs> but they are unique and interesting. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we're clear. Approving this today lines up to regulation with code. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know if you have. And the then the then the next step after that would be once we if we approve this today, then the mayor's office and all the stakeholders and other whoever they may be will begin to begin conversation and we'll probably have this conversation again. Is that correct? I hear see everyone nodding their head. Yes. In, a, We're in agreement. This way. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> but my question is, what are you? I'm sorry. What are you approving today? Would you please clarify that? I can clarify that. So it's a revision of the sidewalk encroachment regulations that were originally passed by this commission in 1998 to delete all references therein to signs, temporary signs in the sidewalk or pr public right-of-way. So basically, there should be a red line in, that was handed out to the commissioners mm -hmm. that shows those cross-outs, basically. I'd make a motion to um, approve the regulations as distributed. All right, we have a first. Is there a second? We have a second. Is there any further comment before we vote? Okay. All right. Before we vote, I would just like to again reiterate that, uh, emphasize that this begins the conversation, discussion with all the stakeholders involved so we can craft the best possible thing. Okay, that being said, all in favor? Any opposed? It passes. Thank you, everyone, for your time and your input. Appreciate it. Thank you. I, I would like to say something, though. There, there are many things that are in this, the rest of this regulation, that are not being followed. And I mean, they're we're they're in violation of these things happening all the time. And I think that if those things do fall under our purview, then we need to make ourselves aware of this and see what we need to do to correct some of these things. So yes, so, so basically you have two sources of authority for your rulemaking power. Um, one source is the Metro Charter, and um, under those provisions, um, when you all make a regulation, it actually it has that force of law. The second source is that council has also delegated to you some rulemaking authority. Um, in that, in that context, you can make regulations, and they are enforceable so long as they are not inconsistent with the Metro Code. So, so the sidewalk encroachment regulations would be in that latter category. Right. Okay. 
Thank you. The next item on the agenda is an old business item, uh, authorized residential permit parking on Carruthers Avenue from 12th Avenue to 11th Avenue, deferred from the May 8th meeting and it has been commented, it's been deferred several times. Council member, I know you've been waiting. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the issue kind of at hand has been, I think we've heard many of the comments, et cetera. I think the question's been, have we followed the code authorizing residential permit parking? Exactly. There's a process that has to be followed to a T. It requires the report to come directly from the traffic engineer, and so I've been working on that. Um, just a quick summary. You got to determine if the area is eligible by code to be uh, considered for RPP, residential parking permit. And this area does meet that el eligibility based on proximity to businesses and that sort of thing. So then you gotta roll into the procedure for implementation and that rolls into needing a petition. And long story short, I've talked to the councilman. We have, and Amy, Amy's been out knocking on doors trying to get, we need, there are 11, possible potential signatures in this area. So to get 75%, you need eight or nine. Right now, we, when I came to the meeting today, we did not have that number. The councilman is gonna update us on that part of the process. Um, so if an, if an area meets eligibility and you get a recommendation from the council representative and you have the petition, then it becomes a voting an action item for the commission. So we've got two out of three right now, and we're about to find out where we are on the petition. All right. Quick Council quick member, okay. Yeah, quick yes, Ms. Woods, thank you. Before, when we voted on this last month, do we vote on something we didn't have the right amount of signatures? Because there was a petition that we saw. We deferred, yeah, we, we deferred last month, so it was an appropriate, I mean, the vote itself was okay. If we had taken action to implement it, then it could have been debated. Okay. All right, Council Member Sledge, thank you. Thank you for your patience. This uh, ordinarily, inordinarily long meeting. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. I'm, I'm getting used to them these days. Um, Commissioner, to your point, um, there was a petition that was filed. There was a petition that met the threshold. I was informed um, by Public Works on May 31st that they would like to reissue the petition, that they wanted to do the petition all over again. Um, why? I believe you'd need to ask Public Works that question. Okay, I'd like an explanation why we're doing the petition again. Corby, go through some of those fi other files on that flash drive. Um, that yellow one, right? Third one over. That is the petition that was submitted. And by code, the petition itself, and it, I'm the messenger, the petition itself has to detail the roadway itself, the, the boundaries of the restriction, the hours of the restriction, and other legalities that are spelled out in the code that have to be on the petition itself. Again, I'm just the messenger, I didn't write the code. But because the process is so tightened down, we wanted to follow that rule. And so there's another petition on there, Corby, can you go down one more to the right? That's the petition that is the the formal process that has all the information by code that we're supposed to have on a petition. Again, I, I know it's just legalities and that sort of thing, so we've been trying to get this petition filled out with the same p signatures that were on the first one, just to fulfill the requirements of the code. So, Councilman, is, it, is this something that you all knew ahead of time that this was the kind of petition that you needed? I don't believe that the residents who initially filled out the petition were fully uh, aware of what was necessary. I was informed um, by Public Works on May 31st. I asked if what the issues were with the petition. They responded by email. You'll note the date on that petition is June 6th. So we have essentially had six days. Um, and if you even count from the 31st, there have been seven business days, 12 days over all um, in which folks have been asked. I can tell you of the, I, I received this at the same time all of y'all did, which was two o'clock today. And when I saw that petition um, and saw the names that had not signed, I immediately contacted those folks to see if they had been in 
if they had been contacted, two of those young men, the Carters, are just not home when these folks have occurred, and they, I believe they attempted to get down here today to try and sign that. Um, the Whitsons, who are on there, um, have been out of town the entire time. This petition has been gone forward. Miss, Miss Whitson answered the phone. They had just come back. Her husband, which is on the next page, is still out of town, and so they have not been able to file it. I believe there's been one other person who was contacted who actually signed the previous petition, did not sign that one. I have left a message with him just to ensure that he understood what the petition process was. Um, but given the amount of time, the very short amount of time, that this petition had been issued and the signatures were attempted to be collected, in addition to the fact that th I, I, I am seeing this for the first time as of 2 o'clock today, um, I fully believe that the threshold will be met just based on the previous petition and the signatories then, and I would ask that the commission, as much as it pains me to say it, defer this another month so that the so that the folks who can sign this, who have signed a previous petition, who have thought for the last six months that they were doing what their government asked of them, can sign this petition and then we can have a discussion about the application. I'd like to make a motion that we defer for the, I'm trying to, our record, is this going to be number four? This was number, this was the third deferral, I believe. Is that correct? You with me on that, Diane? Okay, so if we can reflect that in the record, this is the fourth deferral. I make the uh, motion that we Aye. defer until next month. We have a first. Is there a second? We have a second. Is there any comments before we have a vote? Okay. Seeing done. There is a motion to defer. All in favor? It has been approved. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. The last item is authorized residential permit parking with two hour permit parking on Park Avenue from 52nd to 53rd Avenue, Council Member Murphy. This had been pulled from the consent agenda. Yes, I just pulled it because I, I felt we should give it the same consideration. Yes. So, um, and until we get get there, I feel like we should wait to avoid the same problem. We do have a letter signed by the council member. We do have a petition form. We did do an investigation of the homes there. There are 10 homes, and only four of those homes have off-street parking. The the impact on this street is businesses on Charlotte Avenue do not have adequate off-street parking. So people that are visiting those businesses are parking in front of these homes. So did they have the same kind of, what kind of petition, Diane, did they sign? Is it, is it like... Uh, this, is every, this is everything that I have in my file. I just want us to be consistent, you know, with the format okay. that we're asking yeah. the Crothers people uh, to do. You're you got it. it. This is the official petition. Okay. For the Counselor, I have really a question because it seems like over the last several months there's been a lot of confusion relating to the code and the exact process that's supposed to take place. Do we have a clearly defined process so that citizens who want to obtain permit parking as allowed by the code, know exactly what to do and can bring a, a verifiable document to the commission so that their will is fulfilled as opposed to being, it seems like it's being frustrated by maybe lack of clarity. Um, yes, so, so the chapter of the Metro Code that addresses residential permit parking is chapter 1242. And all of the things that, that Chip is referencing, the, the ways in which the original permit in the Carruthers example um, uh, kind of fell short, those things are spelled out in the code that they were supposed to put those in the petition, and it appears that they did not. So, I mean, if they had read the code a little more carefully, they probably could have realized that omission. But um, in order to make it more user-friendly and helpful, I think that second form that, that um, Chip had Cody show y'all 
on the um, slideshow um, uh, does actually kind of make it more user friendly um, for petitioners because if they use that exact form, it has blanks for all the information that they're supposed to fill in that the code provisions require. Um, so that may um, help with um, uh, that sort of technical aspect of filing a petition. Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, because I think we need some clarification in this process so it's clear. Citizens shouldn't have to, uh, I think, go through this kind of process. That, that, the, what's been going through the last several months, it's been unclear. I'd, li I'd like to also request, um, I think there was a citation that the attorney for the, that was opposed to the Carruthers mentioned it. Uh, if you all would send that out in an email to us, what that citation is, that'd be great. Uh, Mr. Dolan, you mean? Um, he, he was also referencing a couple of other things. Um, his focus that he had mentioned at previous meetings um, was uh, the need for, was it a, a written report from the chief traffic engineer? And it doesn't actually say written report in the code, it just says report. Um, but he was interpreting that to mean written report. So in the Carruthers case, Chip did a written report. Um, I don't know if the 53rd example has that. He just uh, mentioned some citations. I just would like to read them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all in chapter 1242. Okay. If and I, I think I think maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, Commissioner Woods, but I, I think what I'm hearing is that you would like legal counsel to provide some to cite the cases in the code, send us information to to us as commissioners as opposed to us having to look it up and write a letter over those citations stating clearly what the process is for residential permit. Is that your yes. interpretation? Yes, okay. I was the, um, the, the attorney that he's gone, but he mentioned a couple of citations and I didn't know what they were, so I just wanted to look at them. So okay. thank you. So we have this request. What John said. Counselor, we would like that prior to the next meeting. Okay. With that, with that said, the report, I, I did send it out late today. Um, it details each code and the letter underneath the code and our response to each of those requirements. Um, so if you get a chance to read that report sometime, that's the format we will start using for RPP. In the past, admittedly, if it, if it came from a council person and it had a petition, and we, when we, it was almost a consent item at that point, we were okay with it until some legalities came up and uh, we changed our process and we, we have to be more formal at this point. Right. With that said, we have a uh, we have this item. Is does would anybody yeah. like to make a motion? Well, looking through that, it does look like everything has been met in this case, mm -hmm. and is, that does represent 75% of the houses that are on the petition. There is that correct? Petition form was signed by all the homes. Okay, and in that case, I would move to approve the park one. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Okay. All right. Um, item passed. I think the only item left is approval of the minutes. It seems like we did not really get a com complete set. Yeah, we've got something on the other no. business. And Yes, uh, John Mayo. Has he been patiently waiting? Okay. And I'll make sure, I, I, I thought the minutes were emailed out. I'll, I'll get them to you if, you, if they weren't. Yeah, so what I'd like to do, if we could make sure at the meeting in July we have all the minutes and they be uh, distributed in advance, then we will approve all those but I think we need to make sure we get them approved each month, please. All right, Mr. Mayo, I know you've been patiently, patiently waiting for us, but. Um, I'll try to make this 60 seconds or less. How's that? Everybody will smile at that, that's right. Uh, my name's John Mayo, I live on Trimble Road. I'm program manager for a research project at Maribel Med School. And the motion I'd like to put for the traffic park commission is to take 6th Avenue North that runs under the Music City Center and open it up to load and unload passengers. You, I'll walk in front of everybody so you can see a picture of this area if you're not familiar with it, but you would be hard pressed to find a better area to load and unload passengers. It's well lit, it's, it's wide, the swarming's wide, there's only one way you beat it in. So if you were looking for a place downtown for road and unknown passengers, this would probably be the best spot you could find. 
so I would like to put the motion for the commission that that could be a designated voting on the way here. Okay, so that's on 6th Avenue running up under the Music City Center. Hard pressed to find a better. Uh, the other brief thing I'd like to talk about very briefly is in the lower Broadway area generally uh, that isn't it wonderful what's going on down there, number one, with all the people coming in. So generally it would probably help everybody concerned if passenger loading and unloading in that general lower Broadway area from the river to 12th and from from Vietnam veterans up to Church Street, if that entire area, if you were able to load and unload people anywhere that wasn't designated as no parking or standing. Got another motion for that. Because, you know, pedal cabs and horse-drawn carriages and all that and thousands of people, it would really facil facilitate people getting in and out of there if passenger loading and unloading was available really anywhere in the lower Broadway area that wasn't marked no parking or standing. I'd like to make that motion as well. All right. So, so what, help me with the problem is, is there like a, there's no place to, to let people get out? Is that the problem? You don't have to take it like that. They're, they're designated areas for loading and unloading. For example, at Bridgestone, um, obviously four sides that are building. Three of the sides of Bridgestone are kind of loading and unloading area. If you do unload in an area that you're not supposed to, he's absolutely right. They'll write you a ticket in a heartbeat. And usually the, one of the areas is on uh, Demonium Street where they'll pull over to unload, and what do they do? They block the bike lane. Um, and half time they'll block the out um, the lane of traffic as well because for some reason they just can't pull over to the curb and unload. They kind of pull it in at an angle and everybody starts jumping in and jumping out of cars. They block one of the lanes of traffic and they block the bike lane. Um, one of the big issues downtown in dealing with these large mat, um, large events, large scale events with all these people is getting traffic in and out of there, keeping traffic flowing, both pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Um, and in order to do that, you have to control all aspects of it, which direction, where the lights, how the lights are running, and where you're unloading and loading traffic. If you designate all these, this area is always open for unloading of pedestrian traffic, then at some point, Public Works is gonna go in there and have to bag, so to speak, like bag meters, because depending on the event and the footprint of that event, that loading and unloading of pedestrians could impede the flow of traffic and getting people in and out of downtown in a, a quick and efficient manner. Um, so with regards to 6th Avenue, for example, you, it would just would depend on what type of an event's going on at the uh, convention center as well as Bridgestone on whether or not I mean, if you have a large scale event going on and you have vehicles in 6th Avenue, 6th Avenue is not very long. What happens, okay, are they gonna back up in what direction? If it's unloading on both sides, then the traffic's gonna back up out to KVB, down KVB, or Demumbrian Street. And it's gonna back up on Demumbrian Street up to 8th Avenue, then on 8th Avenue all the way over to Broadway. Well, you really can't back up under there because there's four lanes under there. There's only one lane going out inside. But what can happen is when the trailer, when those people pull in there to unload, mm -hmm. and eventually it's, everybody's going to be lined up to unload, it's just going to be lined up down the roadways, okay. coming in and getting them out. All right. So, Chip, kind of in the interest of time, because I, I think we've got some commissioners who need to go. It sounds like what we need to do is take Mr. Mayo's suggestions, thank you for coming, and what draft some yeah, what, what policies and things, studies that you can bring back to the commission, mm -hmm. and in that way, uh, uh, and that's and that's exactly what we'll look for. We'll right. look for width, and we'll okay. look for obstruction of traffic. And if it's not going to obstruct traffic, it can be a passenger loading, right. and this body can pass. So, Mr. Mayor, we'll make a commitment to you. You're patient today, waiting two hours. We study this. We'll try to come up with a plan. Okay. okay? All right. Are there any other items? Everyone's been very patient. Thank you very, very much. Yes. Oh, yes, ma'am. You've already been here.
You're back again. But it's under a different thing. What, what item do you have, please, ma'am? I'll state my name again, Layla Vartanian, and I have a business at 418 Broadway. And why I'm here is because we need a um, to replace the one-way street in the Ryman Alley. Um, there, uh, the sign is gone. Since I was here already earlier, I thought, well, this is a good time to get this under the uh, table here. Um, the Ryman Alley was under construction about three, four years ago, and they took up all the one-way streets, and so now there aren't any signs saying which way you should be going. So I have a business in the back, and sometimes I'm at nose-to-nose -nose with another car, and we're like, who's going to back up? Okay. Chip, can we get this problem solved, please? Easy okay. as pie. There you go. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Thank you all very much. All right. Is there any other item? <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. Second, second. We are adjourned. Thank you, commissioners. <coughs>